Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly Harrell. I'm the CEO of Hazelcast, and I'd like to take a few moments to talk about our unique approach to data processing that uh, allows customers to do what we call unlocking the money moments. So first question is, who uses Hazelcast? The answer is often surprising. Uh, the answer is everybody on this call and anybody who watches this event uh, after that. Uh, we have a large uh, portion of our business that comes out of financial services from payment processing, fraud detection, um, trading, analytics. Uh, anytime you're uh, going through a payment process, whether it's credit card or fraud detection, Hazelcast is behind the scenes making sure that that happens very, very quickly and with integrity. Um, if you shop on any large e-commerce site, uh, Hazelcast is going to be there making sure that you're having a solid uh, experience in terms of response time and that your checkout is, is fast. We have many other verticals that we play in as well, but those two happen to be the, the largest for us. And the reason, and I'll show you why in a moment, is that uh, when time is money, customers buy Hazelcast. So the company our, itself is uh, global in scale. We have uh, uh, people across 21 countries, um, 200 you know, large global customers. Uh, we have a global uh, open source uh, user community uh, that is really massive. Um, and even our largest customer is a trillion dollar market cap. Our customer base itself is uh, also multi-continental, uh, 24 of the largest banks, uh, eight of the largest uh, e-commerce companies. Um, and you can see the, uh, the other stats there. Um, and we've been growing. Uh, matter of fact, last year we raised $50 million in growth capital. We've increased the, uh, the team by about 50% over the last year. Uh, Intel added us into their AI disruptor program and part of their Optane persistent memory launch. Uh, and IBM now is actually directly selling um, uh, Hazelcast to their customers. So we've got quite a reach um, and there's good reason for that. The um, adoption of Hazelcast is really being driven by digital transformation. Um, these are strategic implementations uh, and they, they're designed to instantaneously unlock the value of data um, in, in that moment. And, you know, they're mission critical applications. So these applications are central to these large business functions. And so they also have to have zero downtime. The technology drivers behind this are very, uh, uh, very, very current. You know, Kubernetes, uh, microservices increasingly driving this. Hybrid cloud um, is a big implementation model. We're seeing more in uh, and more and more in edge computing where uh, just vast amounts of data are being generated uh, from IoT types of uh, types of environments, uh, and this happens to be a very very sharp place for us to uh, to, to leverage uh, machine learning uh, processing capabilities of the systems. So, what Hazelcast has is really some unique insights on how to address data in order to unlock that value, and th these insights are born from from years of um, of practice. Uh, with really advanced technologies. Uh, now, this all happens to be kind of the furniture of our mind because we deal with this all day long. But when we go to customers, this is very, very new. And so, you know, if they have never seen this type of technology before, they may not know exactly, you know, how they might leverage it. And so it's a little bit like the experience that uh, Henry Ford had. If I asked people what they wanted, they'd see a faster horse. So we often walk in and, and we're, we're really helping the customers expand their perspective on what's possible. Now, our vision for the company is to empower the world to act instantaneously on data everywhere. If I unpack that, you know, each one of those words is very, very carefully selected. You know, we, we're, we're here to empower the world. We, we have global ambition. Uh, we're already getting there. Um, and and we're, we're not just teaching customers how to understand something from, about their data from an, analytics, but to actually act on that understanding as well, and then to do it instantaneously. Now, I'm going to be talking about what I mean by instantaneous um, in a couple of examples here in a moment. But, um, you know, think of a, um, milliseconds, right? There's a thousand milliseconds in a second. And it takes 300 of those to blink. So 300 milliseconds to blink. We're typically working on the one to two millisecond time frame. And sometimes down into the microseconds as well, which is millions of a second. So that's what we mean by instantaneously. And, and that ends up mattering. Um, and as, as it relates to data, you know, what type of data? A lot of times we think of data as data that's already been stored, data that's in a database or a system of record. But there's other types of data. There's streaming data. We've had streaming data around, you know, forever, back in a, you know, mainframe days from the MQ series or TIBCO. You know, this is 
an event happens, a piece of data is published and it has to go from point A to point B. Um, more currently, we've got things like Kafka and Pulsar and Kinesis that are really increasingly popularizing the usage of streaming data. And we can do this data processing everywhere. We can do it on premise in your data center. We can do it in the cloud in our managed service. We can do it at the edge. So this is a very, very powerful vision that we have and we are realizing it. Some examples of some of the mission critical use cases. Um, payment processing is one. Uh, one of our customers is driving 10,000 transactions per second with five nines of uptime. Um, fraud detection is another one where for credit card uh, transactions, our customer is running multiple algorithms, multiple fraud detection algorithms within milliseconds and at high, value, at high volume. And they're doing this not just for large transactions, they're doing it for every time somebody buys a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Uh, E-commerce, uh, we've helped customers uh, reduce order processing times by you know, very large amounts, uh, holding very, very fast uh, latencies and response times for the, for the end users, and doing this with a system that can expand just uh, elastically, whether it's a slow day, you know, slow Sunday, or whether it's Black Friday or Cyber Monday, and always being able to deliver that same level of performance and that same level of uptime. And we've got uh, implementations in edge computing. We have the first operational deployment of streaming technology in the oil and gas business, where there are uh, some 60 or 70 sensors per rig feeding data in real time. And we're processing that looking for anomalies so that they can shut down the rig before something breaks. And that saves a lot of money in their drilling operations. So these Ali, are really core me, applications. I have a question. This is Enrique here. Uh, sorry, but you know what? I didn't understand what you actually do. I mean, is it a hardware platform? Is it a software? Because you're talking about, you know, several platforms, Kafka and mm -hmm. many others. Yep. And so you mentioned a little bit of everything and you uh -huh. can, you looking at this, you, you can yep. do I'm gonna show you. everything, but it's not really clear what you really do. Yep, we're, in, we're we are a software and cloud company, but here I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that in a moment. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I'll get to that right now. So there's two capabilities that we have in our software platform um, that are both of which are best in class. And this is the way to view this. We have applications and those applications are calling for data from the database. Uh, for the applications that we power, databases are simply too slow. They cannot respond in time. They weren't designed to respond in that kind of time. So what we are, we are an in-memory compute platform. We're a software platform that runs in standard memory and shared, uh, shared memory across, uh, across pools of servers. And we pull data from stored uh, data sources. We pull it up into memory and we serve, a, we serve that application at megahertz speeds instead of RPM speeds of, of the disk drives. And that allows for us to deliver the key characteristic of extremely low latency and response time to the application. So everywhere we go, there is a database below us. You know, we are not the database. We are basically a massive turbocharger that sits between the application and the database. And that's for stored data. Now you can have also streaming data, as I've mentioned. This could be Kafka, IoT, MQ. That's data that is born in the moment. And there's opportunity for processing it if you capture it in the moment. You know, it's data that got born and it's gonna go from point A to point B. You can process it effectively on the wire. That feeds through our platform and here the key characteristic of performance is real time, which is different than low latency. Low latency being a fast response time and real time being a, a function of processing it in the moment. So the ability to, to process both stored and streaming data at very low latency and in a very high real time is the unique capability of our software platform and uh, there's no other platform in the world that can do both of those. And if you think about this, you know, what's in databases are, are the records. You know, the system says, I know something. I know something about this, the profile of this, this user, for example. But what you're dealing with with streams and events is you're dealing with the payload. You know, I, I, something just happened and I have the information about what just happened and is passing through. Um, you know, those are two different types of information and you approach them differently uh, for processing. The, um, the thing that we do when we're working with customers and helping them do what's called kind of unlocking the money moments here is you know, understanding that digital workloads are different. They're just different. They're very low latency. They can have immense amounts of scale. They've gotta be always on. 
It could be streaming and stored data. It could be transactions and analysis, and it could be hybrid of any of those things. And when you get into this hybrid data processing like this, you can do things that were not before possible. You can take brand new customer engagement models. So for example, you know, one of our customers has uh, a system where uh, when, a, when one of their users goes up to the ATM and logs on, that creates an event which triggers off a bunch of computation on the backside, analyzing the prof profile of that customer, and in real time, then text the customer a custom offer, perhaps a low interest loan. All done in the moment while the customer is still still there. And we got uh, other examples um, like risk processing for large banks. Uh, a bank that does a lot of trades, at the end of the day, the, the, the normal way for processing their risk profile is running a large overnight batch process and calculating just how much risk they're bearing if the market does not go the way they want it to in the morning. And that amount of risk is really high, therefore they have to hold a lot of cash on the balance sheet for regulatory purposes to cover that risk. Well, we showed customers that they don't have to do it that way. They can, instead of doing that as a nighttime batch process, they can run it continuously all day long and by the end of the day, they know precisely where they stand from a risk profile. It's a much smaller amount of risk and they can hold far less uh, cash on their balance sheet, which allows them to, you know, to put that other cash to work. So in something like that, you know, you're talking about, about new processes that are fundamentally transformed uh, from the way that they used to do things. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we do a lot of business and financial services. Um, a publication there, The Banker, every year puts out its awards for innovation and digital banking, and they're celebrating what they call the art of the possible. In 2020, there were 15 winners. Six of them are Hazelcast customers across multiple continents. As a matter of fact, the top honors for global payment was, was for the global payment solution that was designed by Standard Chartered, which is uh, using this combination of capability for uh, really innovative payment processing systems. So what we are is we are a data layer, a data processing layer that sits between uh, systems of record and the application, as well as taking uh, events and data streams. We can run that on premise, we can run it in, in the cloud, we can run it at the edge, and that makes us very, very unique. So I'm going to leave it there and I appreciate your, your time. <laughs>